Hello, it's Dr. Srinivas Badmalbuni, and thank you for joining us today. Um, so I'll present you briefly. You are a seasoned IT professional with um, a PhD and 25 years experience in artificial intelligence. You have won the award of eminent engineer by the Institution of Engineers, and you are the author of multiple certifications, including AI United and API United, provided by Brightest. So today um, we're going to focus on um, AI, and um, I will be asking you several questions. Thank you. So, what is the link between AI and data analytics? Uh, thanks uh, for the question, Emily. This is a very pertinent topic today in the world of uh, AI, especially since uh, you know AI is a very hot technology. It's influencing our lives every day with ChatGPT and all these new AI technologies. But AI is quite an old technology, so more than you know, 50 years old technology. But uh, the link between AI and data comes from the fact that uh, you know, ultimately, when you work on developing an AI system, you actually work on data collection. And it is only when you have sufficient you know, data, and then you can apply algorithms on the data to analyze deep patterns inside the data is that you can, you know, develop AI systems. So the basic idea of AI depending on data is the fact that AI is the art and science of extracting deep patterns from data. When I say deep, it means really hidden patterns inside the data, which is probably evident for humans, but for normal statistical programs, it may not be easy. So here comes the gap. When I say data analytics, they also talk about some kind of summarization of data. Like, for example, if you, you know, let's take you know, average age of uh, students in a class. So that's some kind of pattern in the data, but that's not deep pattern. It's a shallow pattern in the sense that just you're looking at uh, some kind of summary of the whole statistic saying that, okay, this is the average age. But when I look at the same and I want to find out some pattern about the students and go through their different attributes, let's say I look at their date of birth and I look at their, you know, uh, you know, the kind of uh, you know, number of uh, miles they travel from home to school, all the kind of data I collect, which is a lot of data, not just simple age. And uh, then I also collect some opinions of theirs, whether they like coming to school, etc. And I come up with some kind of a more deeper pattern, which says that, you know, it is uh, interesting that uh, people who are of uh, the higher age bracket and who are probably staying closer to the school are happier compared to the others. So that's a complex rule or pattern which I have extracted from the raw data. So that is where AI comes in. So data analytics can be any kind of pattern, but if it is shallow, very simple you know, statistical measure like average, or let's say I do some simple graph of the ages and find some plot of the histogram. I get some idea of the data, but it's not deep pattern or any rule I can extract from connecting the different you know, behavioral aspects or connecting different uh, you know, attributes of people. So that is where AI comes in. AI brings with it predictive aspects to analytics, which is more complex which is uh, more involved in terms of the complexity of the pattern that is extracted from data. So that is where the data analytics stops and AI begins. So you can say AI is one kind of analytics, which is maybe the complex predictive analytics, or in fact, if you have more complex patterns, like the patterns on which uh, today we're trying to create driverless cars, et cetera, they're also calling it cognitive analytics, where it's not like we're doing any shallow analysis of the data, but deep, deep patterns close enough to mimic human beings. So that way, I would say AI is doing kind of analytics, but in data analytics, we stop at 
very simple you know summary data like descriptive analytics or simple visualizations which give us an idea of the trend in the data but to model the actual deep patterns inside it we need ai powered with something called as machine learning algorithms so machine learning powered ai is you can say is the advanced form of data analytics where we do predictive deep pattern extraction from data and that's what enable us to create you know the whole complex systems like chat gpt driverless cars spam detectors or face recognition engines etc so when we talk about ai it is a kind of data analytics when you talk about data analytics it's a superset but you may have simpler analytics like descriptive or exploratory which are shallow whereas when you get into the deeper predictive and deep pattern extraction from data it is basically the complex analytics like predictive or cognitive analytics which is where the ai comes in so that's basically the link between ai and data analytics and the difference between both there is similarity and difference between both thank you very much so concretely what are the steps needed for becoming an ai professional Oh, that's a longish uh, answer that deserves a very longish answer for people who are listening to this. So, you know, AI, as I said, as the technology has existed over the past uh, few decades, but the technology within AI, which has made, you know, the possibility of extracting deep knowledge and patterns from raw data is the whole technology of machine learning. And within machine learning, there is a kind of a technology which is called as deep learning, which is very good at dealing with images, text, audio, video kind of data. Whereas machine learning was more clearly a technology which was meant for extracting data from tabular sources and extracting patterns from tabular sources. Tabular means something like an Excel sheet. So today, if I were to talk about the technologies that are required for an AI professional, see, you should look at three aspects. One is this whole machine learning, deep learning set of algorithms. What are the algorithms which can enable you to extract patterns? And second thing, which is also very important is as you must be aware, AI algorithms help us in extracting patterns from raw data. So when you talk about extraction of patterns from raw data, it does not come magically. Just the take algorithm and take the data you collected and put it. It doesn't work like that. So there is a whole nine yards of steps which are involved in terms of taking raw data and making sure that you have an AI system built out of it. So the steps could be in a very, very high level. It could be about making sure that you are collecting sufficient data that could involve technologies for scraping web, scraping Twitter, or going to your BI systems and extracting you know, data from querying those data warehouses. Or it could be even sometimes generating your own data. So that is also a very, very important part of the whole thing because generating data is very much a part of the data acquisition because sometimes the data sources you have may not have sufficient data. So once you get that data, it's not like I can directly apply the you know algorithms, the so-called machine learning deep learning algorithms on the data. For example, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say I want to do sentiment analysis on typical Twitter data. The Twitter data is very noisy. It has a lot of unwanted characters. There's RT, then ads, then a lot of, you know, you know, some crazy keywords, which may not make sense contributing to sentiment. So you have to do a lot of data cleaning. So that is a significant effort of, or a significant step. So as I said, the step here is about take them the raw data and clean the whole data and make sure that you're creating good data, which the algorithm of machine learning and deep learning can work on. So the algorithms related to machine learning and deep learning come the next, which is where once you have the clean data, you start developing some kind of a model or based on these algorithms on this acquired and clean data. And then you also do something called as testing of the model or evaluating the model. 
whether the model you built is correct or not. Why I'm saying you need to test because, you know, at, at times, you know, we have a different algorithm for the same data, which is clean. I may apply one algorithm like data tree and another one I may apply a deep learning model like, uh, let's say, a neural network. So I want to compare which of them and test them whether which of them is performing better. So testing of the models is also equally important in addition to just building the model. So once we test multiple combinations of models and just see which one is giving the best results, and that is where we see that a potentially usable model after having done thorough testing is available for you know, actual deployment. And that is where we see how to deploy that model. So where would the model be deployed? Is it in a mobile app? Is it going to be deployed in a web container or is it going to be divided on a simple sensor, which is very small in footwear or anything? Or it could be deployed in a you know, large application inside a big server. Depending on the deployment, you need to understand what are the different deployment environments and talk about it. So, Again, as I said, the steps, data acquisition, data cleaning, mobile model evaluation, before that model building, and finally, after model evaluation and testing is over, we talk about deployment of model. So five stages, data acquisition, data cleaning, model building, model testing and evaluation, then model deployment. So these are the steps which also guide you in terms of what is the knowledge required for becoming an AI professional. I would say knowledge of all these five becomes important. So you should have knowledge about how to write data acquisition routines, how to acquire data from Twitter, how to acquire data by querying conventional data analytic systems like BI systems. Secondly, when you want data cleaning, you should know develop mechanisms to clean so-called unclean data, maybe add some new columns called feature engineering, or maybe transform the data into something else. All the steps which are required for data cleaning is important. If it is image data, you need to so how you can crop, you can you know, remove noise. If it is audio, you have to remove noise. If it is text data, you remove something like stop words. So data cleaning is the most important part of the AI journey. And all the professionals need to be aware of the different techniques of doing that. Then comes the model building. And here is where you need knowledge of the different algorithms, their you know, different ways of applying that on data. And then comes the model testing, which is where we talk about evaluating the metrics of the model. And finally, deployment, there you need to understand different architectures of deployment. Are you going to put it on GPU? Are you going to put it on an edge device, etc. So these are roughly the you know, five skills and the knowledge in depth of each of these five stages, which is becoming mandatory for becoming AI professional. So then comes another question from all that you said. Um, what is the set of requirements then um, that are needed for the role of an AI tester? Okay, so I told about the fourth stage, right? Which is the model testing and evaluation. So from a perspective of uh, people who want to get into specialization of this whole, this fourth stage, right? This is model testing and evaluation. There is a need for people to understand that this model or the AI system is never a standalone system. It's always part of a larger system which is being used by end users. Let's take the example of a simple, let's say, a spam filtering mail you know, model. But what it is functioning in, it is functioning inside Gmail where some incoming mail comes, it is passing through the model and giving an output. Is it spam or not? Based on that, the Gmail is doing an action of putting it into spam folder or going it to inbox, right? So you see, there is a beyond the AI system, there is surrounding systems which are working with that model. So model is like a black box to the surrounding systems. So one of the things you got to understand is you need to understand typically the steps for 
testing the non-AI parts and integration testing of the AI parts with the non-AI systems. Then coming to evaluating and testing the model itself. See, the model itself has a life cycle, right? Started from data, then cleaning, then model building, then evaluating. So there, it's not just about the functional evaluation of the model, which is basically talking about how good the model is in terms of its accuracy or metrics like error. But we should also look at some of the interesting quality attributes of AI, which are emerging, and conventional non-functional requirements like security, privacy, etc. So from a model testing perspective, we need to understand testing of the data itself that's coming into the model building. So what do you test at the data level? Do you have data sufficiency test? Do you have sufficient data for you to create the model? Then you have something called as the data bias test. Is the data biased towards a specific class or specific you know, category? So you need to take care of it because that is an important feedback to the people who are modeling saying that we may have to do some changes in the data so that it does not look biased before passing it on to the model. So at the data level, we can do this test. Then we look at in the terms of model building, the biggest knowledge you need to carry is for each of the types of ML, what are the evaluation metrics? Like for example, if it's a regression, I need to know what's the mean square error to compare different regression models and regression algorithms. If it is classification, I need to know accuracy or F1 score. These are metrics which you need. So the second knowledge is at the model level. What are the metrics you need to evaluate the models on? Then comes the third one, which is about the non-functional requirements of the model. Is the model secure? Can you do security testing of the model by preventing adversarial attacks? Do you want to check if the model is passing on the privacy aspect, whether it is leaking any personally identifiable information? Then you also want to do something like the concept of what we call as the model explainability, which is an upcoming trend where if you have a very complex model, can you generate explanations for how the model is working? So test for explainability becomes important. And then comes uh, you know test for some very interesting concept, which we did at data level is the concept of model bias or model fairness. Is the model behaving disproportionately with respect to the different uh, you know, categories in which it's supposed to behave fairly? And then comes the model functional testing, which is not purely based on evaluation metrics, but are you covering the input space? That's what we call as model coverage testing, where based on the input data, are you covering all the different varieties, variations, or different kinds of scenarios in which the system will be put to the AI model. Have you done thorough analysis of that? And why is it important? Suppose, for example, you have tested a driverless car in uh, normal daylight conditions, a lot of training data is given, and you're tested in night condition where a lot of full light is there. But suppose you didn't capture much on the twilight condition where it's transitioning from day to light, day to night. And this may lead to the model not knowing what to do when it is in a twilight zone and that may cause accidents. So testing for coverage is one of the most important aspects for testing the model so that when we are going and deploying the model, it's not going to give you something which is not seen in the past. So it behaves erratically. So testing for coverage is going to really uncover so-called bugs in the model in the sense, what are the scenarios in the input where it's going to potentially fail? So we saw data related tests, then we saw model tests, both on metrics as well as on non-functional like security privacy. And then we saw model coverage and explainability. And then comes this whole concept of when you're deploying the final stage model deployment into where it's integrating with the other non-A components. And that is where the deployed model needs to be tested. So what are the things you need to test there? You need to test for something called as performance, means what is the system throughput? Is it giving you know possibility for multiple simultaneous users to hit the model and give back results? And lastly, which is beyond the deployment, we also need to understand that model life is not over once you deploy. It is passed on to serve the different function users. 
So as it goes through, what we need to understand is, is the model behaving at the same levels of accuracy as it was deployed? And that is where the concept called testing or concept drift happens. The concept drift means it was not accurate later in time at the same level as a time when it was deployed. So because what happens is, let's say I've deployed a stock market prediction. A stock market prediction was giving good accuracy when it was deployed. But let's say in a week's time, some major mishap happened. Some war started in um, globally and it started affecting stock prices. So the model which was deployed a week back was reflective of the that time's you know, parameters, that time's environment. But now with new data that is coming in, most likely it is going to show a significant drop in accuracy levels because the current stock market has some extra factors which have come. So that means testing for concept drift tells you whether the concept of whatever pattern has been extracted is still valid or you know to go back to the data equation and do the whole life cycle again to build a new model so as you can see you have testing at the data level then testing at the model level, then testing at the model deployment level where it's integrating with the non ai systems and then through the deployment testing for concept drift. so four stages of testing all stages of testing come important for ensuring that an AI system powered by machine learning deep learning are working well, working as per specifications, and that they do not cause any gaps in terms of the business expectations from the ML system. So these are primarily the kind of tests that are required for an AI tester to be knowledgeable about and at the same time you know, provide value to the entire AI value chain right from when you're working along with data scientists and ML engineers and data analysts to make sure that the final business value of the ML system is delivered. Thank you very much. So this brings in a new question, actually. Um, will data analytics testing also work for big data then? Uh, yeah, a very important question because as I said, the sources of data in uh, any AI ML system need not be only coming from structured BI data warehouse kind of uh, system, which is what the data analytics testing is focused on. A lot of times the data which is coming for, you know, analysis and extraction of patterns is uh, coming from commoditized uh, you know, storage systems, also known as big data which is basically an alternative way of storing data in structures known as data lakes, where heterogeneous data sources like unstructured tweets, unstructured sensor data, unstructured images, all of them can be stored together. So the challenge of testing in the big data world comes up with the, the heterogeneity of the kind of data that is stored in these data lakes. So because of that, we need to look at newer techniques which can not just depend on the very structured nature of data warehouses and the reporting structures on top of it but we should look at the whole pipeline of what does it take to get sources which are unstructured test their level of cleanliness when you're migrating from there to let's say build a report by collecting data from data lakes you need to look at how correctly the data has been migrated into the target system. And then you should also look at testing the whole system of uh, the storage, whether it is able to handle diversity of the data, which is the variety of data, volume of the data. And also you can see if uh, there is a need, you may have multiple, put multiple data lakes. So there is a need for a separate testing analysis and testing potentially a new kind of a you know, thought process of certifying professionals who are in the BI, but not based on data warehouse, but based on data lakes and big data based data sources powered by you know, systems like Hadoop, etc. So these systems will be primarily looking at uh, commoditized hardware based big data sources, which are cheap and not based on very large costly data warehouses. So the kind of techniques that will be required here will be very different from what we typically see in data analytics testing, which is purely focused on the DW, data warehouse kind of structures, which are 
costly, highly uniform, etc. So we may again think about multiple components on the testing, could be testing at the source, testing during migration, testing during loading, testing during reporting from the data lake, and then also testing the you know, accuracy of the reports that are generated, etc. So I think big data testing requires uh, you know independent handling and is worth consideration separate from maybe data analytics testing. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think this was um, a very full explanation of the AI state at the moment. Um, for more information, um, I'm inviting everyone here to visit the AI United webpage. We will just have the contact written here beneath. And um, yes, thank you again. I wish you a lovely day and I wish um, everybody at this event a lovely day as well.